Hey, we'd like to take a minute to thank our sponsor, Isotope, makers of software and plugins for audio repair, mixing, and mastering. We use Isotope products here at the High Gain. It's an important part of how we've been able to bottle pure podcast gold week after week. And guess what? Isotope offers one free month of Music Production Suite Pro, which has all the tools you need to mix, master, and repair audio. Also, you can get 10% off all other software using the promo code FRET10. That's F-R-E-T-1-0. All of this is at isotope.com, I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. Hey, this is Ed Peterson. And this is John Kiltica. This is the High Game Podcast. The High Game Podcast. Yeah, what do we talk about, John? We talk about guitars all the time. Cool. Where do we record? Beautiful West Seattle, Washington. How's the uh, weather out there, John? Actually, it's pretty good today, I yeah. think. Yeah, no, it was nice. I walked up. We did the farmer's market, me and uh, Claire and Vicky. Neck beards? Uh, uh, not too bad. There were a lot of dogs out. Not too, not too many neckbeards, but a lot of dogs. Farmers markets in general. Yeah, we've that, had that discussion. Yeah, that's like, dog town. Yeah, yeah, I got some uh, blackberries. I offered you a little pallet of them, and then I ate them all. That's perfectly fine. They're a little, maybe a little too tart for oh, me. Oh, I love it. Woo! Tart like Ed's soul. Yeah. What's going on? Oh, not much. We got a guitar here today that uh, we're going to talk about. I'm stoked. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked too. For Woo. the time, it was unusual. And still is considered kind of rare and nice and lovely. And <laughs> I don't know what the numbers on those things are, but yeah, rare and hard to find. Yes, 10-4. Yeah. I have only played a couple of those things and... This is the first one I've ever played. Oh, really? Yep. Whoa. Beverages. Yeah, a little meandering intro into that. Sure, that was good. That was nice. Ed picked up the beverages today. I went to Husky Deli, West Seattle Zone, Husky Deli. I think we know about these guys already. Yeah, we do. Uh, we've had them a few times. It's the Americana Soda Company. Pure hey. cane sugar. Oh, I know. Big corn? Nope. GTFO, big corn. Yeah, mine says delicious vintage. Does yours? Yeah, yeah. I got us the same one. So that's their slogan. Black cherry. So I don't know. Maybe. These guys are out of Muckleteo. That's a good Washington State name. The Muckleteos. Muckleteo. And the Puyallups and the... Squim. Squim. I used to be a stockbroker, John. You know that? What? Yeah, years ago. And I knew that. And people would call in. And the one consistent thing I found with Squim, uh-huh. everyone that called in from Squim would say like, Hi, this is Bob Smith from Squim. Everyone from Squim <laughs> says they're from Squim. There's some pride going on sure. there. For viewers yeah. listening at home, it's actually spelled S-E-Q-U-I-M. Hey, yeah, hey, this is Bob from Squim. Yeah, hey, Bob. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. In that area, Muckle Tio, they make a fine yeah. beverage. We're nailed down on this. Killer. So I think we need to hit up the Americana boys and say like, hey, send us some beverages. You want to know what this is, Ed? Uh, yes, I do. It's kind of bright. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is a Travis Bean yes. aluminum neck guitar. I love it. This particular example? Yeah. 1975. Okay. Which is pretty impressive because they started in 1974. Early in the run. Early in the run. This yep. one is number 365. Are they stamped sequentially? Kind of. <laughs> Let's say for the most part. Like okay. More or less. Okay, what does that mean? They had different models. Okay. And sometimes they would number the models differently. Mm. But sometimes they wouldn't do that. <laughs> How many did they have? How many models? Yeah, I can think of two. I don't know any of the model designations. It's pretty easy. TB is a prefix on all of them. Travis Bean. So this is a 1000 S. Okay. S means standard. Okay. A means artist. And it's oh. really simple to remember, too. Okay. The only difference, Yeah. it had a carved top and block inlays. Oh, okay. Other than that, 100% the same. Okay. 
They had a 500. Is that the kind of offsetty, stratty kind of looking thing? Yeah, like the Steve okay. Albini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind yeah. of thing. That was considered their budget model. Oh. It had single coils as opposed to these 1000s that have humbuckers. Okay. And then they had a 3000, exceedingly rare. They only made 45 of them. Imagine a flying V. Oh. And it comes down like this. Yeah. But instead of Oh, it's at, the flat back. It's like a triangle on a stick. Totally. Also known as the wedge. Yep. And they made that as a base as well, a wedge base. Yeah. The only other thing was a 2000, which was a base. Okay. So what is this? This is an aluminum neck, which yep. is almost a misnomer because it's not just the aluminum neck. Imagine right. you've got a big, long block of aluminum. Yep. And it goes down into the body. Yeah. To just pass the bridge. Yeah. The pickups and the bridge are actually bolted to that block of aluminum. Right. So you could take the body off and still have a playable guitar. Oh. Because you've got the pickups and the bridge. So the resonance of the strings right. is uninterrupted. The front, super clean. Yeah. No screws, no nothing. Yep. Super clean. Like even the uh, pick guard. Is epoxied on. <laughs> so is the fretboard. That thing's not coming off. Huh. Interesting thing about that aluminum, Yeah, it started out as 125-pound block of aluminum. <laughs> so it's big. And then they would just start just, carving and carving yeah. and taking away until that block of aluminum yeah. would be like three or four pounds. Okay. Travis, he was a dude. What's his deal? What's his deal? Yeah. Oh. Oh, no. He's not doing much these days. Okay. What he, happened? Lymphatic cancer. Ugh. Clifford Travis Bean. Cliff. Born 1947. Oh, man. He died in 2011. 47. So if you go 50, uh -huh. if you go round that up to 50, uh -huh. and then in uh, 2000, he would be 50. So uh -huh. 2011, uh -huh. he would be uh, 60. So he was 64. Yeah. He was born in San Fernando, California. California guy. Okay. Travis Bean, California. Yep. Travis Bean, California. Okay. Grew up not doing much with guitars at all. Okay. He, he was a motorcycle racer. Oh, cool. He liked to race motorcycles. Was he in a gang? No, he was like racing motorcycles at the track, mm -hmm. racing motorcycles. Okay. Until an injury no. sidelined him. Okay. So he couldn't race motorcycles anymore. Yeah. He had to find a job. Have you ever seen The Master? Semi biographical of Scientology guy, L. Ron Hubbard. Oh, it's that one. It's with Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, did you say L. Ron Hubbard? L. Ron Hubbard also. Yeah, we lost them both. But L. Ron Hubbard, I don't know if you dong him because he, uh, maybe he's not lost. He passed on. He, like, uh, he's gone clear. Exactly. Yeah. He had done as much as he could with his mortal coil. Yep. So he just, he intentionally got rid of it. Intentionally shuffled it off. Next level shit going on over there in Scientology, California. Those guys. Yeah. Anyway, there's a great scene in The Master where they go out into the desert. You know, is there like consciousness expanding thing? They get on this motorcycle and just like, go as fast as you can. And uh, Joaquin Phoenix gets on a motorcycle and just goes forever and leaves him in the middle of the desert. That's pretty good. It's a great movie. The Master. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so uh, our man Travis gets injured on the motorcycle. Right. Can't ride motorcycles anymore. No. He has to get a job. Oh. So he's looking around Travis Bean, California, and he gets a job at a guitar shop. Weird. Not even doing anything particularly interesting. I think he was like in the shipping department or something. Oh, okay. And, you know, like you do when you get a job at a place, you meet yep. people, make friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he made a friend. Okay. His friend's name was Mark McElwee. Okay. Yeah, this name's come up before. Does it sound familiar? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mark was working there doing tech stuff. He was a guitar tech. Yeah. So Mark was a tech, yeah, and he'd hang out with Travis in the back because I guess Travis was shipping shit, and right? Mark yeah. was teching stuff, sure. So Travis is noticing that Mark's doing a lot of setups, like you do if you're a tech, put new strings on, adjust the truss rod, all yep. that kind of stuff. Yep. Travis, who doesn't know anything about guitars, mm -hmm. is asking, "Why do you always have to adjust the neck?" Right. Because you know they bend and they warp and all of that kind of stuff. Right. So Travis says, "I think I have an idea to fix that," and he tells Mark, "Why don't you just make it out of?" Of aluminum it won't warp mm -hmm. yeah okay let's try that out travis from the motorcycle days or something did he have machining experience he or actually something? he actually did he was a machinist as well because that seems like a crazy idea to have 
if you don't know machining yeah. and you don't know guitars. Yeah. Uh, so they get together and they start knocking out prototypes, trying to figure this thing out. Sure. This is like uh, early 70s, maybe. Okay. Until they think they have something they like mm -hmm. and they decide to go official with it. They get another partner. Okay. They get a third guy. Yeah. And they start up Travis Bean Guitars in 1974. Okay. The third guy, Gary Kramer. Oh, yes. I remember this as well. Yeah. In the future yes. would be Kramer Guitars. Kramer, what's he up to these days? He's doing stuff. Great. He pretty much took Travis Bean's shit and went and like, oh, I'm going to start another aluminum neck company. He did do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know that it worked out too much better for him. Well. But, but we will get to that as well. Okay, keep going. So 1974, they're up and running. They're machining these aluminum necks out Love of it. an alloy. Turns out aluminum alloys yeah. are numbered, depending on what alloy is in them. They would eventually move on to 7075 alloy, the primary component of which is zinc. I got you. The 7075 yeah. was developed in secret in 1935. For rockets. By the Japanese. Oh, 35? Uh -huh. What would they be making? The Mitsubishi A6M Zero fighter jet. Jet? Those weren't jets. The Zero Fighters. Got it. Did you know the 747 is made out of like 146,000 pounds of aluminum? Whoa. Multiple, multiple tons of aluminum. Aluminum is a, a miracle. Yeah. How do you put 150,000 pounds of metal in yeah. the air? That's some magic. Thrust, Dad. Thrust. I love the thrust. While not the first guitar to incorporate aluminum in some regard, this was a great step forward in terms of how it was used. Prior examples from our good friend Wandre or our good oh, friend yeah, yeah, yeah. Valeno. Right. Might have a separate headstock that was actually welded to the yeah, neck. Yeah, that just seemed weird to me in the Wandre. But yeah, aluminum. What do you know about aluminum, Ed? Aluminium? Yep. I know that if you go to the store yeah. and you get a Coca-Cola beverage yes. with big corn and yeah. you drink it <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and you throw that can into the recycling bin, uh -huh. virtually 100% of that aluminum is recycled and turned into another can. Very little waste. And I know that on average in America, uh -huh. if you throw an aluminum can into a recycling bin... Yeah. Yes. That aluminum is made into a new can within 60 days. The miracle of aluminum. I love it. Yeah. I love aluminum. Aluminum's great. Guitars with aluminum necks. Yes. Sound bitey. Pretty bitey. I love it. When they first make these, yeah. the bodies were Hawaiian koa wood. That's what that is? It's pretty solid wood, yeah. Koa wood. Yep. Did he do any like weird one-off custom order stuff? Like he did he? didn't, and there was a reason. Oh, okay. Travis felt that the one-off custom stuff would dilute the brand. Huh. This is my thing. I developed it. It's very unique. I think this is what you get. Did they have paint jobs? They what did. Colors. Red, white, blue. Maybe some pearlescent in the white. Yeah. But mostly wood grain. Mm. So that would have been like a special order deal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Early on, yeah. some people picked them up and uh, they got known. I would like to hot seat you, Ed. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Is it shellac? No. Okay. Jimi Hendrix? By 74, I believe our man Hendrix is on vacation. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. Okay. We I lost think so. him. Yeah. We lost him. This would have been about 75, 76. Got it. I don't know. Is it Joe Walsh? Is it someone <laughs> who was formerly in the Eagles? No. Yeah. That song was 1977. Mm -hmm. It was called Terrapin Station. Okay. That, Ed, yeah. is a Grateful Dead. Uh. <laughs> uh, you know... It feels not great for me to get big Eagles vibes. How much do I love the Eagles? Probably about as much as the Big Lebowski likes the Eagles, which is to say not much. <laughs> uh, 
They made huh. him a 500 model. Was that... Uh... Jerry Garcia. Okay. That's the one with the single coils in it. Mm-hmm. To give you an idea of how early on, yeah, it was serial number 12. Wow. Modern day with the internet. Maybe it's a little easier to get your brand out there. You can kind of post your stuff on Instagram and put little stories up. How did Jerry Garcia in 1974 find this company? Like, I don't know if he did. Like, I'm going to go to a show and maneuver oh, my yeah, way yeah, yeah. backstage. And, and the guy a guitar. And like, let the guitar speak for itself. Yeah. Wow, number 12. Yeah. That guitar, by the way, upon yeah. his death or shortly after his death. Oh. 1942 to 1995. It's all real cool when you're out there in the 60s and you're a baby boomer and you're Doing a bunch of fucking cocaine and heroin. I don't know what he died of, complications of diabetes or something. He had everything in his system. He died of happiness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you suppose he was grateful? Uh, you know what's interesting about that guitar, Ed? Man, where is that thing? I'll tell you. I want to hear it. In 2013, it hit the auction block. Oh, God. $243,200. Yeah. But... It mm -hmm. included an unopened pack of unfiltered Camel cigarettes. I guess those like, were in the case. Oh, that's funny. $243,000, you get a pack of smokes. That's not bad. How's that for a conversation piece? People come over and look at your knickknacks on your shelf, your little uh, glass figurines of unicorns, and in and among them is an unopened pack of smokes. What's with the smokes? Oh, those are Jerry Garcia's. Yeah. Weight problems, sleep apnea, heavy smoking, diabetes, drug addiction. He had some physical problems. A couple few. I apologize. Yeah. He was in rehab. Yeah. 70s. What a time, huh? Oh, God. What do you know about the 70s, Ed? I know people did a lot of drugs. They listened to a lot of the disco music. Oh, the disco. ABBA? 70s. I know some 70s. You want to hear some 70s? Okay, yeah. I prepared some 70s for you, Ed, because, okay. you know... How about oh, that? That's lovely. This is a shimmer reverb going yeah. through uh, the Electro Harmonics Ocean's Eleven. Okay. This was the top song of 1974. Okay. Can you tell me if you recognize it. That's Babs, right? It is. Right? Barbara Streisand. 1970-something, yeah. I don't know. 1970-something. That sounded beautiful. Yeah, thank you. I do not associate the sound you just made with that guitar. You don't? With shellac prayer to God. Ed over there is correct. Yeah. The people along those lines were pretty into these guitars once they realized how slappy they oh. could be. And those pickups are hot AF. Hot AF. John plugged it in, and I looked over at the DAW meters. Yeah. Those pickups were just jacked the telecaster deluxe we know has the wide range pickup developed by our man seth lover yep oh lovey yep there are some that think that early prototypes of this 1000 model travis bean yeah that's what's under the covers oh really yeah oh i think eventually they either would get cut off by fender or end up winding their own or whatever as they went into production really so the question i would have is if you take these covers off yeah are there staggered pole bangers underneath right there right because right. it's a fender pickup wow yeah cool interesting huh so you have alluded to the spankiness of shellac yeah why don't i uh get us in the mood with some shellac oh i like those guys you like shellac yeah i do oh, that's pretty good not only steve albini yeah plays a travis bean right bob, bob. weston yep. plays a travis bean bass yep so you'll probably hear a little bit of both of those in exactly. this exactly so you know two for one it's like a sale bob Isn't that great? I love it. That, that sound. Isn't that amazing? I love it. If we put on the Mantic Flex <laughs> Pro pedal. Yeah, that thing.
that's a pretty good pedal. It's a great pedal. Yeah. So you got your dirt pedal. We've got right. the Big Muff Triangle. And if you want to make that dirt <laughs> indecipherable. Put on just the Mantic. Just the Mantic? Yeah, let me hear that. Yeah. I kind of like that better. It's got another switch on it. You want to okay. see what it does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll play a single note. That single note kind of with the modulation, that's the kind of music that I often just sit and listen to. <laughs> like weird droney shit that drives my family crazy. Uh, 1975, mm -hmm. our man Gary Kramer leaves. He's been working there for at least a year and a half. Well, there's a couple things that he is not into. Okay. I mentioned that the three of these guys, Travis, Mark, and Gary, they were working on the design, banging out prototypes, leading up to the 1974 founding of the company, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's three dudes designing this thing. 1974, they opened the company, and Travis Bean gets his patent for the neck. Oh. It might have chafed Gary a little bit that his name was not on that patent. Did Kramer and Bean ever go at it in court? No. Okay. No. Okay. Travis decided somewhere in here that he wanted to be a drummer. <laughs> so he sets up a big old soundproof drum room in the factory, which wasn't very big anyway. Yeah. Orders weren't being filled on time. Oh, weird. New okay. orders weren't being taken in a timely manner. So Gary was thinking, well, I could do an aluminum neck guitar. Right. I don't know if you've seen the back of the Kramer guitars. Mm -hmm. You take that aluminum mm -hmm. and you route out two channels right. going all the way down the neck. Put some wood in it. Put some wood inserts in there. Mm -hmm. So ostensibly, that makes the neck lighter. So it doesn't right. neck dive as much, but more probably it keeps him from running afoul of Travis Bean's patent. Yeah. But those aluminum neck guitars, even still, the Kramer ones, weren't made really for that much longer than the Travis Bean's were anyway. Okay. And then by 1979, yeah, it's done. Huh. Four-year run? Five-year run? Yeah. Total run, how many got out there? About 3,600. The 1,000 standard, mm -hmm. 1,400. Okay. So this guitar I'm holding, there's only 1,400 of them. Yep, 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 if yep. If they all still exist. Right. The 500, which is yeah. the Jerry Garcia, Steve Albini. Right. There are only 351 of those made. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. That 500 is my jam. That's the one I like. I like that and 500, that's... too. Where'd we get this guitar, John? We got this guitar at Thunder Road Guitars. They're good guys. Yeah. Pretty spanky. Hey, John. Yeah. You know what I don't want to talk about? What? Mattresses uh -huh. and boner pills. And it seems like I listen to a lot of podcasts, uh -huh. and there's a lot of advertisements for mattresses and boner pills. And we don't do that. So you know what we do? What do we do? We have a Patreon. We have a Patreon page. We, we have a new subscriber at the $5 level. We do? Al. Welcome, Al. Yeah, yeah. Get on that community tab and like tell us all about Al stuff. That's cool. Yeah. It really does matter to us because we don't want to be shilling stuff we don't like. No. So, so. if anybody wanted to go to patreon.com slash the high gain, yep. that would be pretty cool. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. You want to hear who else plays these things? Mm. Uh, the old Travis Bean? I can think of Silkworm. Yeah. Is it Silkworm? Maybe. Okay. That's all you can think of? Yeah. Do you know a woman named Rose Marshak? No. She's a bass player for a band called Poster Children. Oh. Do you know the Poster Children? Yeah. Yeah. Go. Uh, this is called Six by Six. Hear her bass? Oh, my God. That's so great. That tone, it's not far off kind of a Bob Weston kind of tone. That was 1999. Okay. Uh, they've been around since yeah. before that even. Okay. What else? You know we like the Swedes. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Johan Folkesen? <laughs> Of course you no. have. No, is he in ABBA? No. Okay. He's in that band Switchblade. Okay. Switchblade Sweden. 
Oh, okay. Apparently, there's an American Switchblade. Oh, so really? It's one, it's one of those deals. Okay. This is called Untitled Number Five. You can hear the aluminum, can't you? Yeah. That's great. Even that's got that bass sound. That's not a Travis Bean, right? I don't think so. Yeah. I'm into it. Yeah, Switchblade. That was from 2013. Love it. Really nice. It's great. I dig this guitar. It is heavy, viewers. Yep. About yeah. the same as a heavy hunk of shit Les Paul. But, you know, if you had to pick which one. <laughs> oh, I'm going to take that over a Les Paul. Totally. Any day of the week. I think we should go out on Silkworm since you mentioned them. Oh, great. Yeah, I thought you might like that. Oh, I love it. 2002, is that a good vintage for you? Yes. Okay. I think these guys were criminally underappreciated in their time. In Silkworm, it was Tim Midget yep. at a 1000 like this. Yep. Modified to baritone. Okay. Maybe explains the tone, right. which is really awesome. This is called Dirty Air. Go check out some Silkworm. Yeah. Good rock and roll music. You know, if you're into that. Yeah. could someone find that guitar this actual example yep is available now at thunder road guitars and thunderroadguitars.com in beautiful west seattle washington beautiful west seattle washington go it's, talk to uncle frank what number is this three something three six five low number we will put lots of pictures on yeah. our instagram account yes we are at the high gain there'll probably be some on our facebook at the high gain who knows if you have any questions about this yeah the high gain pod at gmail love it uh, you could do that. You could go to our Patreon, join up, and Ooh. then ask about it on there. Ooh. In the community tab. <laughs> yeah. You guys could just be talking about stuff. And we'll answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty good, Ed. Yeah, and then we won't have to talk boner pills anymore. No. You know? Boner pills. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm not philosophically opposed. To boner pills? To boner pills. No. I just don't no, want to, no. like, if somebody's going to pay me to talk Shilla. about something. Yeah. I'm not opposed to... You know, consuming it. It's just the shilling of it. It's <laughs> not my thing. That's right. We, we have right. better things to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> With our boner pills. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Cool. I think you did great today, John. I think you did great, Ed. I want to thank oh. you for bringing the beverages. <laughs> yeah. No problem. And thanks for all the awesome aluminum facts. Oh, I had a couple. Yeah, that was cool. It's a wonder material. Oh, yeah, absolutely.